Hey everyone and welcome to part two in our Power BI for Beginners series. My name is Brad and in today's video we'll be walking through an introduction to the Power Query Editor and working through some of the great functionality on the back end of Power BI. Now if you missed the first video where we talked about what exactly Power BI is and some of its many use cases, feel free to head back and give that a watch. All right, let's take a look. So in our last video, we connected to our first data source, the financial sample Excel spreadsheet. And in some cases, you may not need to do any data normalization or correction, but I do think in most cases, you're probably going to need to know how to format and clean your data before you begin creating any visualizations and publishing your reports. So that's what we'll spend our time looking at today. So we find ourselves uh, at the canvas here, and if you look over to the left-hand side, we have these four different icons that we can use to navigate. So the first icon is our report view, and that's just the canvas. That's just uh, where we are right now. The second icon is the table view, and this presents sort of a spreadsheet-like format uh, or presentation of your data. So we've got our different columns and our different rows. Uh, we can do some sorting and some filtering to take a look at the data. Uh, next up is our model view. So the model view uh, allows us to examine the relationships between our different data tables. Obviously, we've just connected to the one data source at this point, so uh, we don't have any relationships established with any other tables. Uh, but to look at those, you could come to this model view. And then last is our DAX query view. So I won't go into this very much in this video, um, but I have published a different video that I'll include a link to where I kind of walk through uh, an introduction of uh, how to use the DAX query editor and uh, what it can be used for. So let's head back to our report view. We'll go up here to the top and we can see this transform data icon. We'll go ahead and click that and this will actually launch our Power Query Editor. So up in our home, ta home tab, we have um, a few different options up here. Um, we can connect to a new data source. We can look at recent data sources. Uh, we can enter in new data. We can look at our data source settings. So um, you might go here if you need to change your permissions when connecting to uh, different data sources or if you need to establish a file path um, to a data source that can be done in the data source settings. The refresh preview icon is helpful if you haven't connected to a data source in some time. So uh, we have this little icon or this little alert here that says this preview may be up to five days old. Uh, if we run a refresh, that will go ahead and refresh the data source and we'll see updated data here in our view. And finally, we also have the option to change our data types. Um, we have all these different data types that we can change to, you know, based on the column that we have selected. Next is the transform tab. So we can do quite a few different things in our transform tab. We can choose to use our first row as headers. Again, we can change our data types. We can replace certain values in our columns. Uh, this can be especially helpful if, you know, you have a data source that's um, feeding you uh, values that are NA in a column and you want to replace those with zeros or uh, with a different uh, different value, you can use the replace values function to do that. All right, next is our add column tab. And this contains some tasks around adding a column, formatting data within columns, and creating custom columns as well. The view tab uh, allows us to toggle on and off some of our some of our data preview options here, like column quality and column distribution. Uh, I'll leave a link to another video where I kind of dig into what exactly these features are and how they can help you evaluate your data and its quality at a higher level. All right, let's head back to our home tab and take a look at what exactly we have uh, going on in our data set here. So if we start clicking on our dropdowns, can kind of get a sense of what uh, what different values we have in each of these columns. So in our country, it looks like we have five countries uh, that make up that column. We have a subset of or a set of products here, um, and in our units sold, we can see that we have um, different numbers in here as well, including some decimals. Now, 
maybe there's a good reason why this data would have decimals for unit counts. Uh, but this sets, I think, a good example of something a data analyst would want to investigate a bit. If we're seeing these decimals in a column we think should be or would be whole numbers, we might want to raise a red flag and reach out to the administrator of the data source to make sure these values are indeed correct, uh, because if not, they could be products of a faulty data source. So for the sake of this video, let's look at one way you could change the formatting of this column to only be whole numbers. Um, so we can do this by clicking out of this. Uh, we are in the Home tab. If we go up to Data Type here, we can see that the current selection is Decimal Number. If we click that and come down to Whole Number and go ahead and click Add New Step, we can now see that the values in the column have all been rounded to the nearest whole number. So we no longer have um, those decimals that we had previously after applying that new step. And in fact, after we applied that step to change the data type, we see this uh, changed type one populate over here by applied steps. And so anytime you make a formatting change or a, any sort of change to your data set in the Power Query Editor, it's going to create a new step over here to the side. And this is helpful because it allows you to keep track of the different changes that you're making to the data set. Um, it allows you to click on previous steps and see what the data looked like before you are applying steps. So for example, I just clicked on change type, which was right before we changed our data type. And you see when I click here, uh, our data type is back to decimal number and we're seeing decimals here as values in our units sold column. Then again, if we come back here and click change type one, uh, we can see that those values update. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this filtered rows step. All right, let's try another one here. So if we come over to our gross sales column and click the drop down, we can see that there are some decimals, decimal values in here. And maybe for the sake of this, we would want to expand these decimals out to the hundredths, hundredths place instead of just the tenths. So we have our gross sales column selected. We come back up to data type and we're gonna click fixed decimal number. And we can see that for all the values in this column, we now have decimals out to the hundredths place. And again, if we click on the previous step, we see that formatting gets removed click on it again, and the formatting is back. All right, so next uh, I'm seeing this discounts column here, and I'm a little curious what it has. Okay, so we have we have some decimals in here, and this would obviously be the amount of the discount, uh, but maybe you know we wanna create a new column that uh, shows the percentage discount as opposed to just the monetary value of the discount. So why don't we do that? If we go up to our Add Column tab and click on Custom Column, that's going to uh, show us this little pop-up here. So our new column name, we'll call that Discount Percentage. And down here is where we are going to establish our formula. And this is similar to uh, Excel, where we can write the formula to populate our records. So the formula we want here is our discount divided by the gross sale and we can find discounts over here. We'll click on that and insert it. Use our division symbol and then our gross sales. We will also insert. Then we click OK. And you can see that the new discount percentage column is added to the end of our table. And if we click our drop down here, uh, we do still see decimals, but what we need to do is update this data type to a percentage. So we'll go over to home Data type currently is any, we'll change that to percentage. And here we see that this has been updated to percents. Okay, let's try maybe one more thing uh, in our editor here. So we do have uh, our date column, and this is going to show um, certain calendar dates. And uh, this column itself looks just fine, but um, I also notice we have a month number, a month name, and a year breakout. Um, and maybe we know that for the reporting that we're going to be designing, um, our end users are wanting to, to see um, data on a quarterly 
level as well. So we can actually create a new column that will list the quarter that each of these dates is in. So one way we can do that is by duplicating this date column and we see that we have our date copy column down here at the end of our table. And if we go over to our transform tab, we see this date icon here at the top. If we click that, you see this uh, quarter option. So this allows us to uh, choose between quarter of the year, the start of the quarter, or the end of the quarter, uh, depending on the date value that's, um, that's in the record. So we'll just go with quarter of year, and you can see that uh, the values have updated here to reflect which quarter this date falls within um, throughout the calendar. So obviously January 1st would be quarter one, uh, June 1st would be quarter two, December 1st would be quarter four. So uh, we can see the values have updated here. I'm also going to um, change the name of this column here. I call this um, quarter. All right, so we've gone through our data in pretty good detail. Um, we've made a couple adjustments to some columns and we're ready to apply those changes and publish the data as is to our report. Uh, one thing I do want to point out here is that all of these changes don't affect the underlying data source. Nothing we did here changes the structure of the Excel file that we loaded into our report. We're simply modifying and making adjustments to how Power BI is viewing uh, and interacting with the data. If you go up to home and we see this close and apply option here, we click this down. Um, if we click close, that will simply close out the query editor, but it won't apply any of the changes that we've made to our data. So it will revert back to um, its status before we started making these modifications. If we click apply, that will apply all the changes that we've made, um, but it will keep us in the query editor as opposed to taking us back to the canvas. And then if we click close and apply, that will um, close out the query editor, apply all the changes um, to our data set and take us back to our canvas or our report view. So I'm going to go ahead and click close and apply. Okay, and now if we go over and expand our financials table here, uh, we can see our quarter number that we added is in here. Our discount percentage that we added uh, is also in here as well. So the changes have been applied to our data source. All right, let's go ahead and get some visuals out here on our canvas. So one important KPI that an end user would likely be interested in is let's say uh, total units sold. So for that, uh, we're going to go ahead and use just our KPI card. We'll bring that out here. And then with that selected, we're just going to click on units sold. And there we have it. 1.13 million uh, units sold. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, update the label there to just total units sold. There we go. All right, another KPI that our end users might be interested in is, let's say, just a total gross sales. So uh, if we want to add another KPI card, we can go up to our, our gallery here and make a selection and click on the KPI card. Uh, we can also do just a simple copy and paste of what we've already created, and then we'll switch out the uh, fields here. update this field label to, let's say, total gross sales. Perfect. All right, and then finally, um, we also have profit as a field in our data set, so uh, maybe we'll add that as the, our final KPI card here. So I'll just rearrange these a little bit, and then I'm going to create a copy of this visual, paste it in, and just like we did before, switch out the values here. Um, profit and for gross sales, and we'll do total profit. Perfect. Okay, uh, enough with KPI cards. Let's try an actual um, chart. So maybe we'll do uh, a bar chart of our sales by product. So um, 
One thing that you can do instead of um, coming into the gallery selection and picking out the exact um, visual that you want, if you actually start making selections and pulling in some of your fields into the canvas, uh, Power BI will start building out a visual based on what you're selecting. So uh, we'll go ahead and click on profit, um, rather product, and we see um, initially we have uh, just a table view of our different products here. So uh, these are all the products contained within our data set. And if we want to um, include our sales by product, we'll go ahead and click on, uh, let's say gross sales. And you can see after we make that selection, Power BI updates the visual to uh, make it into a horizontal bar chart as opposed to uh, just the table. All right, let's do another one. Um, I'm not a huge fan of pie charts, but you know what? For the sake of this video, let's go ahead and add in a pie chart. So maybe we want to see our sales uh, by country. So if we can, uh, we add it in our, our uh, pie chart visual, we'll click on country and then gross sales as well. And if we expand this a little bit, um, we can see that our gross sales volume is broken out by country and it corresponds, of course, to each of these different um, pie slices here. All right, uh, I think this is this is pretty good so far. We've got, um, got some good visuals going in, uh, in our report here. Um, I think one thing, uh, one other thing I'd like to add in here is um, the ability for some users, for our users to make some selections, maybe um, to further customize their, their view um, of the report here. So let's go ahead and add in some slicers. And let's say maybe that uh, we know that our users are going to want to be able to make a selection um, based on you know, the segment of the product or um, be able to adjust the dates um, that are, the dates tied to the data um, showing on our in our report here. So I'm gonna do just a little bit of rearranging real quick. All right, so let's go up and click on our slicer tool. We'll just post this here for right now. And let's pull our segments into our slicer tool. So here we have our different segments and uh, what this will do will allow the users to um, filter down the data that's displaying based on their selection. So for example, if I just click on government, you're gonna see all of our visuals update and these are going to be sales and product information that are tied um, just to the government segment. If I click it off, uh, everything resets back to, uh, to include all of the segments. So same thing for small business, in market as well. All right, uh, let's say I also want to include a date slicer as well. So we'll click on our slicer tool again, and I'm actually gonna change these around. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull in our date as a slicer. And similar to our selections in the segment slicer, if we adjust our dates here, you're gonna see the visuals update um, based on the, the sales that were taking place within that, uh, that timeline. All right, uh, I think we've made some, some pretty good progress on our report so far. Um, we've added our important KPIs up to the top of our report. Uh, we got a couple visuals going on in here and we've even added um, some slicers so that our end users can make some selections in the report and adjust, um, adjust our report to display the data that they are looking for. So we'll go ahead and stop there for now. Uh, in our next video, we'll take a look at how we can make our report a little more aesthetically pleasing by diving into some of the report formatting capabilities. As always, if you have any questions about this content, or would like the BICS team to cover a topic in a future video, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to stay updated on future videos, and thanks for watching.